Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Oh, I'll have a quick look at these um, SNES power supplies. I've got two of these. Um, faulty um, spares repair. Um, they're AC adapters, these on the SNES, um, same as the NES. Um, I'm guessing they're both SNES. One, one might be from a NES, I don't know. We'll have a look at the parts and stuff later. Um, as you can see, it's looking underneath, they've got a couple of security screws. So these are serviceable. Well, you can get into them. I'm guessing um, it's going to be the problem with the cable. Possibly a fuse. I would think that someone would be smart enough to have checked the fuse. Um, and I'm guessing there's going to be at least, at the very least, a thermal fuse on the transformer. These are quite heavy. It's just going to be an AC transformer, you know, stepping down from 240 volts here in the UK, 220, down to, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, 10 volts or something like that. Uh, I'm trying to look at the voltage on here, yeah, 9 volts. So, yeah, um, 9 volts then. Um, there's no rectif rectification takes place in this, it's all you know AC output, it's done in the SNES itself. So other than maybe a couple of safety caps, um, maybe uh, uh, an inline fuse as well as the thermal fuse. I don't know, but that's all I'm expecting in there, there's not going to be much more really I don't think. Um, so we'll just try and get inside this now um, and see what's what. So I just thought I'd show you here the screwdriver bit you need, it's one of those. Um, and it just fits snugly onto the gap there, if I just show you a bit closer up. You'll see if you look at the head, uh, sorry I'm not sure how well this is going to focus here, if I move my hand a bit more to short, you can see it's got a little um, rectangular sort of fit, and as long as you get the right size bit there, you should be able to get that out. So I'll just get the other screw out. Okay, so both screws are out, so I'll just carefully ease this apart, and we'll have a look. So yeah, there ain't much, not even any caps, not no safety caps or anything, it's just straight into the transformer here and straight out the other end um, so it might be a bit of a lost cause this if it's the transformer um, if there is a thermal fuse it's going to be embedded sort of deep within it I'm not going to be able to get to it really um, so a mm, bit of a pain sometimes if you ex if you expose the tape you know remove the tape there um, just covering the windings sometimes you'll find the thermal fuse um, on there, it could be this, it might be that actually, because we've, can you see we've got a piece of heat shrink or something over there, it could be that's just a bare wire, but it could be that the thermal fuse is uh, inside that, I'm not sure, um, but in any case, I'm going to just, I'm going to plug this in actually, um, just make sure you've got no pets or any toddlers or anything around when you do this, I'll plug this in an exposed state like this, and then I'll get my, me my meter onto the, uh, you know, the output windings here, and just see what's coming out of this, because then that'll eliminate whether it's the cable or not. Make sure you're on AC, not DC. Um, we'll just look across there. Can you see that? 11.1 volts. That's about what I would expect. I did say 10, I know it's Mark 9, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah, these things are always uh, slightly inaccurate. And it probably is rated to be 11 volts or thereabouts. Um, and there's no load on it as well, so that's a factor. Um, but, there you go, there's nothing wrong with that. Power supply works. So it is just the cable. So that was not bad, it means I've got a power supply now for my SNES. So we'll just repeat the process for the other one and see what's what with that. Same situation, I'll just remove this elastic band from the mains lead here if I can get it off. And the bloody thing won't come off, will it? Right, there we go. So if I just plug this into the mains, make sure I'm nowhere near it. And again, I'll just put the probes on here. Uh, um, can't get the thing. So you'll see there's a lower voltage. It could be that I'm not getting a good connection there. Let's, yeah, there you go. 11.7 volts AC. So again, power supply works fine. And I'm guessing if we checked it on here, um, I'll try and do this so you can see it. See the screen. Um, yeah, can you see it showing something like? Hold on. Yeah, it's not showing a very high AC level, can you see that? It's going to be the connector, it's going to be the cable, um, I'm damn sure of it. It could even be that these just need resoldering on here, but the point is, it's working. So in terms of replacing the connector, 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'll chop them from about that position there, perhaps a bit further back. Um, and as you can see, I've got some suitable replacements here. You can get a bag of five of these for about a pound. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much, it, it doesn't look quite the same, but it is dimension wise, the center, the center with, dimension, uh, with uh, uh, diameter and uh, the outer diameter, they're identical. I know that because I've plugged this into the SNES and they fit perfectly, um, a nice snug fit. So um, yeah, I mean, it's a shame to lose that blue one there, but as you can see, they're molded. It's not like you can do, and that's where the fault's going to be. There's probably one strand or something just arcing across, which is why you get a very, very low voltage. And you probably find if you bent this, you could probably get a stable voltage reading on it. Um, but in any case, uh, that's what I'm going to do. And the other thing you can do is obviously once you've got this exposed like this, and I'll do this now actually, is you can test some continuity on these two pins to the relevant pins on here. So let's just do that. So as you can see, centre pin is fine. Can actually test resistance, go a step further and actually test the resistance there. 2.5 ohms. So if we do the other the other one, we'll do continuity first. Um, and this is the one that I'm you know maybe it just needs resoldering, I'm not sure on this particular power supply. Um it might be a bit of trial and error just to hold this in the right place here. I don't think I can actually. Try and put it on its side just so I can see it. Yeah, so when it's on its side there, I'm getting a reading, but I've got the feeling it's. Yeah, it's, it's gone now. It is the connector, I'm sure. Let's try it again. So here we go. I'll just snip this now. Uh, just pull that elastic band off first. In fact, I'll just cut the bloody thing off, I think. Go and we'll snip it off from about there. Now, because this is AC, it doesn't matter which way around you get these wires, um, all that happens is you change the phase, um, which makes no difference whatsoever. Good grief, that is thick. So, as you can see, there we've got an outer braid shield type thing there, it's just a single, you know, covering, it's not sleeved. Um, then a single sleeved core, so we'll just expose the end of that. Yeah, that's alright, I actually pulled too much of the wire off there, but by the time I've just heated that with the iron, it'll, the sleeve will probably shrink back a bit, and that should be okay. So, all I need to do is Unscrew this, and sorry, I know this is not rocket science, but for people who are inexperienced, then uh, hopefully this will help them. Um, I've probably got too much there, really, on the thickness, because as you can see, you want the white, you want it sort of like that, and you only need a short distance on the wires, so not on each of the wires, and that, I'll probably just wrap that around under there like that. Um, so this can be trimmed back right almost to the end there. So I'll do that now. I'll just snip that right back down to about there like that and then we'll just expose enough of that so hopefully you can see this I'll try and move a bit more into central yeah. uh, just heat heat with some solder and flux um, and I tend to go all the way along here um, this should be the solder just because then you don't get any single strands of this copper sort of you know roguing the way out of the sort of pack if you like and um, becoming a problem. At this point, slip your sleeve, um, you know, your housing thing over the end there just to make sure you've uh, you've dealt with that, otherwise you just have to take it back off again afterwards. And we can just measure it up at this side, at this point now. We know that that point there is going to go um, onto there okay, so I guess we just need to just focus on pulling that around that way, like so. As you can see that should be okay so I think what I'll do is I'll um, I'll solder that tab on there now so you'll see that's one so all we've got to do now is just route that uh, shielding around there so hopefully you can see there not the cleanest work in the world but I've got the two points there soldered and isolated from each other I just need to just tighten up um, you know bend the two bits of metal there to snatch it together and then just screw this on so 
pretty much done. Okay, unexpected turn in events here. Um, I always have these weird things happen to me. Um, <clears throat> the connectors are, are a problem, um, as I've proven. You know, you could wiggle them and the power would go on and off. But after putting new connectors on here, I found that they're still not working. Um, now the transformers are all okay. You know, the volt you've got voltage coming out of the output side here, um, about 11 volts. Um, you've got to be careful when you're doing this. Sort of, you've got 240 volts mains on that side. Don't don't be um, putting your fingers or anything inside there. But um, anyway, long story short. It's the bloody cables. You know, these cables, I don't know if you saw when I first got them, they were like, you can see the, the curls here. They were really tightly bound. And that is what destroys these SNES power supply cables. Um, you know, you want to loop them up. And I'll show you what I mean. If I'm, when I fix this, you know, my idea of a way to wrap this cable up is like that, in quite wide loops. You know, not not tight. If you if you bend in it, if you put in, if you bend in it like that, you will snap the copper inside, especially when it's aged as it is in these cables. And that's what it is. It's a common problem with these. Um, I did done a bit of research just looking online now, and there's a guy who's got like twelve of these, and every single one is the cable. So if I just show you, this is switched on at the moment, and if I just wiggle around this point here, to see power light coming on there. Um, not sure if that's going to come out on the camera. You see that? So it seems to be here at this point and the other one is proving hard to, to, to determine um, it could even be short in, inside there I suspect that might be what's happening so I think what I will do is I'm going to snip it off about here slide the grommet off and just resolder it on I'm going to give that a try and yet yeah, another change of plan um, these wires are absolutely shot they really are the multiple breaks all the way through the damn thing wherever there's been you know wherever it's been bent like that that's it it's pretty much snapped inside um, so I'm going to order some replacement cable as you can see I've just pulled the grommet off here and the, the, the trick to doing this is snip it on the wide end there so that you've got the cable still stuck out but it's like it's flush with there and just get some WD-40 and spray WD-40 in there and sort of twist the wire and you know try and bend it right across and try and get a bit of WD-40 in there and then with enough force I gripped the base, I gripped the wire with the pliers and pulled the connector as hard as I could and it just slid straight off so um, I can reuse that, but as long as I don't get wire that's too thick, that should be okay. Um, you want something ideally that's just the right size, but what you can always do is put, you know, slide some heat shrink over your wire before you stick it in there so that it makes a good fit. I mean, you can say I can push that straight back in there now because of the WD. So if I get a wire of a similar size, I can probably just put a bit of super glue um, in the inside of there and just push the wire in like that. And within a minute or two, it's going to set. You, want to make, you may, need to make sure, obviously, you push it back through far enough so you can join onto the transformer. So, um, yeah, I've, I'm going to order some new cables for this and just completely swap them out. So I'll show you what I mean here on the second one. If you start with, just pull, pull it like that. You can see you get a little bit of a gap. So if you do that at the same time as, oops, sorry, knocking the camera again, spraying a bit of WD in there. And then just sort of rota try and rotate it a few different ways. That's just going to help the WD get in the top end. Um, and then do the same thing on this end here. I mean, it's, you can see some of it's leaked through already, but it's not the easiest thing to film and do at the same time. This same thing, just rotate it a few times like that, wiggle it around, and then snip off this so it's flush with the wide part that goes into the power supply. Get your trusty pliers and do a bit of this basically while you try and twist it, pull it. And if you do this for long enough and use enough force, you'll see it just slides off like that. Right, well, the wire's arrived. Um, it's supposed to have come from Portsmouth, it's taken two weeks. Um, checked on my phone on the eBay app and uh, lo and behold it's come from China so I'd love to know how they managed to get away with that but I don't know if you can see this can you see the shit that is on this cable it is just covered in crap I mean it really is um, I don't know, it's like spider webs or dirt or what I don't know so I'm going to cut this length um, and then clean it before I even do anything and then wash my hands because God only knows what that is there, um, <laughs> so just be wary. I mean, look at the state of the bag. <laughs> That's supposed to be a clear bag. Um, doesn't that just say it all? I don't know. Probably got some corrosion going on in there and all sorts. I'm gonna have to chop the end off. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's clean it up. 
So when it comes to feeding the wire back through the grommet here, this is just a tiny, tiny bit too thick. If you look at the diameter of that hole, um, it's pretty much the same, but even, with, even when you oil it, it's damn near impossible to get it to feed in. So what you want to do is just use a knife, crafting knife like this, and do it for a, a, a more than the distance, maybe just about 20% more than the length of the, um, the grommet there, and just shave it down to make it uh, as thin as possible and you'll find that'll make it much much easier especially when you get a bit of WD-40 on there as well it'll just make it really easy to feed it in through the grommets and then you can just pull it through when it, once it gets through just that extra inch or so just to um, pull it right through there we go it's back on the grommet now um, by far that was the hardest part of this getting the bleeding grommet back on but um, that should be okay um, and I had to pull the wire a fair bit so uh, connectivity is still good but um, yeah, it's had a, quite a lot of stretching and pulling on this part here, so just need to make sure that I've got connectors before I stick the connector back on. So one thing we should do here now is um, just test this. Um, obviously you can see I've got the grommet just loosely in place here. There's a bit of clearance um, there to stick a bit of super glue on, but I'm going to clean it up first, make sure there's no WD-40 on it. Put some super glue just on that bit there and then just slide it back up, um, you know, half a centimetre or a centimetre there. But uh, this is plugged in now, I've sent my meter to AC, uh, false AC, and we'll just measure this, just to make sure that it is working. Um, and as you can see, it is 11.58, so that's fine. Right, so here we go. Uh, got the connector on here now. Let's measure that. There you go, 11.48 volts AC, so we'll give it a test. Right, so one of the things that's uh, been really useful um, in this last week, someone posted on one of my videos, uh, so I think it was one of my videos, or they might have done their own video, I think he posted his own video on the Super Famicom, uh, the Japanese one, um, and one of the things he mentioned there just passing, there's no bridge rectifier, and I was shocked, um, and I suddenly realised that when I did that, uh, super, my Super Famicom teardown, and there was a little component there just near the power, power jack that I assumed was a, uh, you know, a... Um, bridge rectifier. Uh, did I say bridge rectifier folders regular? Anyway, bridge rectifier. There's no bridge rectifier on them on the Super Famicom. Um, so that was a mistake, a very important mistake in my Super Famicom video. Uh, that teardown. Um, if you watch that, like I say, the, the, the Japanese ones do need a DC power supply um, because there's no bridge rectifier. And I found that with this. As I put a new cable on it and stuff and tested this, it's outputting the 12 volts AC, whatever it is, correctly. These are both power supplies are both working fine now. I've replaced the cable, as you can see here. Um, yeah, brand new cable, brand new connector, but these will not work on a Super Famicom. Now, I did connect this at the, just for a few minutes, trying to diagnose what the hell was going on, still finding it wasn't working. I was getting weird things on the screen. It was like half working and half not. It was like garbage and stuff on the screen. Couldn't quite work it out, and then I spotted, literally an hour later, after I sort of just put it all aside and thought, I'll have a look at it later, spotted that video, and I thought, oh my God, you know, I've just put AC into uh, Super Famicom, that's what I expect in DC, so the top, the short, the, you know, sort of top and bottom of it really, is my system's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, because I only, it was only plugged in for maybe 10 seconds at a time, you know, for three or four different times while I was trying to work out what was going on, was it the, the DC jack there that was wrong or what, but anyway, so what I'm going to do is produce a little board that I'm going to put inside this and convert that AC to DC, um, and then mark this up underneath to say it's DC, just so, I, you know, I don't get them mixed up because I've got an AC one which I will be keeping for um, my PAL systems, uh, well, PAL boards and things that I've still got to work on at some point. Um, but what I want to show you is, uh, you know, what we're going to do here and a little bit about AC and DC and some of the people might want to chip in and add some, or correct me and add some more detail and if you want, perhaps do their own videos and stuff in response. Um, that might be interesting. Um, well, this is really basic stuff, but it, this and this is for sort of total beginners, really, that don't know anything about these things. Um, um, you know, if we look at the AC, you got let's say you've got 12 volts uh, AC coming in. Um, what you've got is you've got a centre line, uh, if you're looking on a scope, and you're going to have a sinusoidal wave sort of coming like that. With this, that should be the sort of same size as the positive cycle there. Um, and from there to there, we've got one complete cycle. You've got a positive half cycle. So, and this is where I think my knowledge was a little bit inaccurate. I think we've got 12 volts positive cycle, and then down here you've got minus 12 volts negative cycle. Um, now for DC, you know, you look at the uh, on a scope again, you know, if, if that's your ground level on a scope, you know, your 12 volts, it's going to be like that. You're going to, you want, you want a nice flat line um, from your ground, you know, to your 12 volts DC, uh, that's ground. Um, so you can convert this 
sine wave here pretty easy using a bridge bridge rectifier you can do what you can do is if you if you take your let's say you've got uh, 12 volts dc uh, i am not rolf harris so <laughs> uh, don't expect this to be uh, nice and tidy if we draw a diode like that there um, and then the ground from here you, th that would give you what they call half wave rectification at this point here so you'd have approximately 12 volts DC uh, half wave half wave um, and that's your ground obviously ground. and on a scope what you would see there that diode basically is just going to capture these positive cycles and block the negative ones and you do get a bit of a voltage drop you're going to get the 0 0.7 volts per diode uh, drop there um, and this is where my knowledge gets a bit sketchy really in places as far as I remember from back in the day when you came to converting AC to DC there was a simple formula you could do and it was like uh, you know sort of AC times 1.414 1, um, and that would give you your DC um, basically um, I'm not sure how accurate that is. I've, I've, I've searched high and low to try and ref remind myself, refresh my knowledge here on this. And I, it, it's a bit inconclusive. I, I can find lots of places that suggest that that's exactly how you convert from AC to DC. But I think it's to do with whether you're looking at the peak values or the RMS. Um, I don't know. So it'd be interesting if someone could put a bit more information there. Um, but coming back to this example of using a half wave rectifier, what you end up with, if you were looking at it on a scope, if you've got your central line there, you, you capture your positive um, peak, uh, and I'm trying to think, you don't, you're not going to get, it's not going to be sinusoidal, because it's only going to switch at a certain voltage, well it will, it's going to be sinusoidal to a degree I think, so you sort of get like positive cycles like that, and you get gaps in between, and what you could do with that, is you could take that further, and put um, a capacitor, you know, sort of electrolytic or something, uh, sorry it shouldn't have a line there in between, but you could have a, an electrolytic, I don't know, let's say 1000 microfarad or something there, um, and that would help smooth this out, so you'd end up, if that's your, um, set your ground line on your scope, um, you'd end up with, I'm trying to think what this would look like, you probably end up with something like that. I don't know, like a bumpy line. You know, pretty bump. It would be pretty bumpy because you've got this big gap here where you're relying on the cap quite significantly. Um, so that's you know, it's not good practice really to rely on that. But it was probably done in simple devices uh, back in the day. Um, but a bridge rectifier. Um, all it is, you've got four connections on it. You're going to see, you will see two AC symbols on the device and, to, and a plus and minus and effectively what you get is and it's easy to rem remember how to do this I think because I always remember I start from the left here so if you, and you're drawing a diamond effectively of diodes um, like this so you have a contact point there a contact point there a contact point there and then again the same sort of thing the diodes go they flow from the left to the right in this direction point there uh, another diode here like this um, and then if memory serves you have your plus DC minus DC um, live oh, sorry, I don't know what that is I put a 4 live down here and then neutral down here that makes sense um, so you can you can more or less work out what's going on here I think these work in pairs I think it's like those two and those two um, in fact the three of them I think are used at one point in each cycle um, in order to get a full return path but basically as you're positive you know as, as this is this side here is more positive than this side then the current flows um, a certain way you know you, you're positive um, I think I'm trying to look at this works now yeah you do that's right that's right so it works and then your negative goes the other way uh, through this diode here I think back to you you know through your return path through the uh, through there I think oh, I don't know this is where I get confused, but they do, as far as I can remember, they work in pairs. You're better off looking at tutorials if you want to get exactly, understand exactly what's going on here. But it's a case of as the cycle flips, you know, different diodes are used in the combination here to swing this negative cycle and to turn it into a positive cycle. So on a scope, you've got exactly this, but the negative swung around to be a positive. So, you know, you put your, uh, you've got your ground line there, you've got that effectively, um, 12 volts roughly um, and then you can do the same thing we, we, we covered here with the um, 
uh, have an adenic capacitor, you know, they call it a smoothing cap. So, uh, you know, like, uh, exactly the same as that, you know, on your DC line. So you'd have one here um, going down to ground. So if we put ground right down here like this. Um, plus, minus. And again, you know, something like, uh, I don't know, a thousand or, t you know, sometimes 2,200 microfarad. There, there's ways of way working this out with maths and stuff. There's lots of formulas you can use. It depends on the load um, and things like that, really. Um, and then it, ultimately, this line then will sort of turn into something like that, you know, depending on what your load is and the capacity value you've used there and stuff. Um, so you've almost got a straight, uh, you know, and they call that ripple. You know, the amount of uh, variance here in the, you know, the peaks and troughs, you know, the, the, in that is your ripple. Um, I think that's it really, I don't know much more about that, that's, those are the basics um, and like I say in principle I think that's all, I've always used that formula and it does work if you've got you know like say 12 volts AC you know that ends up being something like I don't know 16, 17 volts DC by the time you've got good smoothing capacitor and stuff on there I think, uh, I could be wrong but anyway we'll uh, have a look at the power supply now, I'm just going to stick a bridge rectifier in there um, and see how we get on. Okay, so what we've got here is a bit of a mess really. You've got one contact coming down to um, the bridge. You can see I've got bits of tape around here. I'm just trying to make sure this is totally isolated just in case anything comes desoldered or, you know, comes off. Because there's no room inside. It's a pain in the butt and there's no room for a cap. Um, but that will fit and I've tested it. Um, and we've got, I think it's uh, sensor uh, negative. Um, I'll just confirm that before I power it all up, but I did, confer I did check it against the Mega Drive power supply I've been using. But uh, yeah, the lid will go back on there with ease now. So uh, we'll just screw that back together and give it a try. So there you go, as you can see, got uh, just under 11 volts DC. So that's good, I'll connect it up and give it a try. So, all back together here, these are working fine. Um, you can see I've labelled one up SNES AC, so that's for PAL, you know, PAL units. And this one I'll stick a label on here now that says SNES DC. Thanks for watching, see you soon.